with my client who has a is it severe? I would say severe nut, right? Mm-hmm. Severe yeah. nut allergy. Um, so that basically means that she cannot use any products that contains any form of nuts. Um, is coconut considered a nut? Yes. Yes, okay. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not really a nut, but it has nuts. Okay, so coconut, um, coconut oils, um, macadamia nut oils, any oils that contain basically the word nut, um, <laughs> she cannot use, which when it comes on to ethnic hair care products, that's almost every product that we ever make. Why? Because we use a lot of the nut oils as emollients to help to hydrate and soften the hair. Specifically because she's natural, most of those products that are going to cater to moisturizing or even natural hair or low porosity hair are going to also contain nut, um, nut emollients or ingredients. So um, one thing that I actually ask all of my clients is typically on whenever they're booking an appointment with me is do you have any allergies? Um, this is something that I started doing years ago because I watched a video of a client and a stylist, well actually a stylist, the stylist ended up getting sued because she used a product that the client had an allergy to and because she never actually asked that client if they had any form of allergy. Also, a lot of clients are allergic to latex and if you don't ask do they have any allergies, how would you know that they're allergic to latex? We use gloves. We use a lot of gloves. And most times we don't think that we have clients who have allergies to latex or anything else. So you just use what you normally would do on a standard, not knowing that you're potentially putting your client at risk. So with that being said, that's another reason why whenever a client is booking an appointment with me, it doesn't matter what service they're booking, what time of day they're booking, what time of year, what season, chemical or not, my books ask the specific question do you have any form of allergies? Why? Because number one, I'm a business and I need to protect myself. But number two, it's needing to protect your clients. Some clients have allergies to, um, I think it's, there's an ingredient in hair color, specifically demi-permanent or even permanent hair color, um, that some more mature ladies, like my mom included, um, have allergies to and they can't get certain colors. So if you don't if you don't know that, then you're basically putting your client at risk of getting sick or even potentially dying um, because somebody's allergy can be extremely severe. So for my client here, um, the good thing is that our strengthening line, which is the Empress Collection, does not contain any nuts whatsoever. That's including um, the hair serum, that's including the leave-in conditioner, that's including the shampoo and the deep conditioning mask. So it contains no nuts. For the emollients, we actually use butters, which is like shea butter or um, mango butter. We prefer to use butters as our emollients. So in the Empress Collection, we actually use horsetail butter as our emollient versus a lot of the other companies, they'll be using coconut oil, macadamia nut oil. Um, there's so many other nuts. I, I can't name them all. But we, it, it wasn't even because of the allergy situation. It just so happened that we just decided that we wanted to make a horsetail butter strengthening line. And it catered really to clients who have allergies to nuts. So there's no coconut oil in them. Um, our serum, which a lot of ethnic hair serums are oil-based, our serums, which is our um, Nefertiti hair potion, that does not contain any nuts either. Um, and it's a water-based serum, so there's no emollients in there. It is a pure water-based, high-quality hair potion um, that is specific to strengthening the cuticle and also helping to restore and repair the hair. So if you have a nut allergy, our Empress Collection is basically designed for you. Um, I used that collection on her the last appointment. We haven't had any issues, which is great. And then today when she came in, um, which I, I love her for because some clients will come and they forget that hairstylists can see anywhere between 80 and 200 clients a month. So if I don't see you for a while and you come and you say, hey, or you don't say anything at all. And I just so happened to, yes, I looked at my book to see that you had an allergy. But at the same time, she reminded me, hey, just a reminder, I have a, a, a nut allergy, so we can't use certain products. That is great. 
Not every client is going to do that, but that's why I also say, you know, you have to know your client. You also have to know yourself, and your client has to know their self, too, especially if it's something as severe as maybe I've had clients where their head will swell. <laughs> I've had clients where it gets into their bloodstream and becomes a, a very septic infection. I've had clients where they're on prednisone for the rest of their life because of some form of allergy that they have. So just be mindful for my stylist friends when you are working with clients. Don't be afraid to ask if they have any allergies. That is protecting you and protecting your client. Hey, my dad is finally back on here. Hey, dad. I haven't seen my father on my YouTubes in weeks. So today we used, um, I didn't do any form of clarifying on her. Um, mainly because she has fine textured hair and she didn't really need to get a clarifying shampoo. Um, so we went ahead and went straight into the treatment shampoo. So I use the Amina strengthening shampoo as her cleansing and treatment shampoo all at one time. So that's a part of our Empress collection. No nuts is involved in that actual shampoo. And then I use the Makita deep conditioning mask, which is a strengthening mask on her hair as well so we did that as a deep conditioning treatment where she went under the dryer for about 15 minutes with a processing cap um, and then we are going to basically soak her out she's also going to get a um, cut today we're going to take off about an inch of hair so when she came the last appointment we basically talked about her ends we talked about them needing to be basically cut to a certain extent um, at that point she wasn't ready yet but I always like to tell my clients, like, listen, you know, whenever you're ready, let me know. We'll do this. We'll do that. If it's something where it's just kind of like it needs to be done right now, I'll advise them that it should be done right away. But at the end of the day, you don't know your client's budget. You don't know what your client is doing. So as the stylist, your job is to basically refer, recommend, and just kind of put them in the right direction. And when she came in today, she automatically knew. She's like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and take about an inch of hair off. I remember we talked about this and she was able to see the difference in those ends once she had to manage her hair at home and see that those ends needed to come off. So for those of you that are so afraid of trimming and cutting, don't be afraid because all it's doing is hindering the process versus helping the process. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm silking her out. I did not put any additional product on her hair. Um, unfortunately, I cannot use the Frizz Tamer and Shine Serum on her, um, mainly because it does contain emollients in it. So what I'm doing is I am just using my flat iron here to silk her out, which is the one inch titanium iron. And then I can't spray her with any goddess polish because once again, that has emollients in it. But the good thing with her hair is that she still has that great luster so you can actually get your luster and your shine and all of that from your deep conditioner as well. So it works for her because her hair is fine in texture and it already has that shine to it. So I don't really have to add anything additional to her hair. Now, most styling aids for ethnic hair typically does contain some form of nut. It's kind of very rare. If it doesn't, it contains a lot of silicone. So just be mindful. Um, for your styling aids as well, because they are not excluded. Those are the ones that can specifically cause a lot or do a lot of damage to clients who have allergies like her. Um, so you wanna just, once again, be careful when you're using those products as well. All right, so we're gonna finish silking her out. If you guys can tell, um, her hairline is definitely something that we are working on. Now, if there's scarring, of course, there's nothing we can do about that. One thing with scarring on the hairline, some people receive it genetically. So my neighbor, who I've known my entire life, um, she actually has had a hairline issue since I was a child. Um, it's been scarred since I was a child. She was a lot, she was very young at that point. So it doesn't mean that you know, it can't necessarily happen genetically. It can happen by something you did over years of you doing it. So, you know, not all thinning or, or, or um, balding is something that you did wrong or is sometimes fixable. So keep that in mind as well. 
Um, her hairline is scarred, but the good thing is we're able to cover over that area as best possible and just kind of work with it to make it look and, and just mask it as best, as best as you can. Some people don't really care, others do. So that's just where we are with it. My hair is very weak in my crown. So I'm going to try to do a Q&A sometime today, you guys, because I see everybody has a ton of hair questions that I can't really look and answer. Um, I know my girl Grasshopper is in the comments. Anything that she can answer, she'll typically answer for me. Grasshopper is kind of the second me, so is Octavia, because they know um, what my answer is typically going to be before I even answer. So they'll do their best to help you if they are in the comments. Um, I'm silking her in almost one inch, three quarters of an inch to one inch sections. She is fine textured, you guys, so I don't have to go strand by strand. Um, also, I want to keep as much density in her hair as I can because I want to make sure that I'm not making it super flat. That is another problem that we have with fine textured hair. Okay, so density is definitely a thing for us. We want it to look like we have a lot of volume. Usually how you can do that, um, you can do curls, you know, do a lot of, it doesn't necessarily have to be tight curls, but you can do curls that gives a lot of volume. Um, placement of the curl when you're doing it, that also gives a lot of volume. Hair cutting, that gives um, the illusion of volume because you're able to add layers and that's gonna stack the hair versus leaving it super flat. So if you're fine textured, there's always a way to give you volume. Now, if it's thin and not because it's fine, that's different. But when you have fine textured hair like her, this is just what she has. There's not something that we can do to change that. That is just her hair. That's what she was given. So just because you have fine textured hair, that doesn't mean that it's damaged. That doesn't mean that, oh, how can I get my hair to be thick? Fine textured hair will never be thick. That will always be a thing for you. So illusions and manipulation is always the name of the game. You can say, hold on one second. One second. Mm -hmm.
Oh, no wonder. Y'all couldn't hear me because it was on mute. <laughs> you didn't hear a word I said. Well, that worked. <laughs> okay, so you heard nothing I said. You guys know I always do that. So what I was saying was um, in her crown area where it's kind of short or shorter than it should be, we are going to start blending some of that area in wherever we can. Um, for the areas where um, her hair is a lot longer, of course, we're still going to follow that one inch guide. So she gave me up to an inch to take off, which is perfectly fine. That's starting somewhere. That's gonna get the process going. As her hair grows out, we will trim and follow her trim schedule. Um, what I was also saying is this is the reason why I talk so much about the trim schedule. So for natural hair, you can follow the financial calendar, which we know we have four quarters in the year. Um, if you're not one of those people where you don't understand that part, then you can follow the seasons if you are in a state that actually has real seasons. Um, I was making the example that Florida does not have real seasons. Even though we are in winter, our winter is not until January, February of the following year. So follow seasons here. But if you're in places like New York or anywhere in the northern states where you actually see fall, you actually see spring, then you can follow the season calendar. Lastly, if you can't follow either one, financial calendar or the season calendar, then you can just do time frames, which is typically every 12 to 16 weeks, you should be getting a actual trim. If you're natural, a actual trim, a real true trim, is done when the hair is straight, not when the hair is curly. If you do your trims when the hair is curly, you're gonna always have an issue with your hair being short, long, short, long, short, long, because you cannot extend natural hair enough for you to be able to see and give a proper cut. Every time you go straight, they're gonna be trying to correct your cut, okay? So I would just say, go ahead, get that silk press once every four to five months, and then trim your hair, and then you can go back to your curly hair. That means you know that on either end, your hair is in the right, because it's been trimmed the right way. Now, some stylists beg to differ, I've seen it time and time again. I've corrected too many haircuts to know that that really does not work. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start um, with her cut. So as we said, we're gonna do one inch. Okay, I'm gonna have you tilt your head down just like that for me. So if you can't see the inch, which I know you guys want to be able to really see what I'm cutting, I'm going to use the cutting tape on purpose. I don't really need it, but this gives you an idea of why we are cutting um, some of it and just working our way through. So if you guys can tell, you can't see anything up here, right? You can't see anything here, but down here you see all of her sparseness. So this is the reason why this is a good place for us to start. One inch is great. Okay, most clients come in, they don't even want a centimeter taken off. So the fact that she said an inch tells me that she understands exactly the reason why we're doing this. The good thing with this cutting cape is it actually gives you it in, in inches. So I can use my clippers to take off one inch and create my guide and then cut the rest. Okay, so that's one inch. Even though that line is there, remember, I'm only taking off an inch. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to use the inch line. I'm going to look to see what an inch would be based on her hair length. Same thing here. Now, I'm not taking off an inch off of the front because I still need to blend it with the back. Okay, so the only place that this guide truly matters is in the back. I'm starting my guide back here. Do I sell those cutting capes? I don't. But you can get these anywhere. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them anywhere. Like, honestly, this one I've had for quite some time. They last a very long time. So you can get these cutting capes basically anywhere. Just find one that works really well for you that has the guidelines that you like. I like this one because it gives me the V, it gives me the curve, it gives me the straight, and it breaks it down by inch or two inch. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off. Because when you're trying to do a haircut, if you can't see 
through, remember we have black capes and then your client has black hair. Then you use that cutting cape and that's gonna make your life so much easier. I see you where I still have some. So this line here, this is going to be my guide, okay? I'm gonna be took down a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do, because I know that I have a specific amount to cut, I'm gonna start from here and work my way up rather than start from here and work my way down. So I am cutting her at a 90 degree, okay? So a 90 degree angle. And the reason why you don't see me kind of speeding through is because I know I have a lot of short hairs in the crown and I don't want to run the risk of overcutting. Okay, so I'm a quick cutter, but when I see that I'm working with something where I know I have a lot of short hairs that I'm trying to either blend in or don't want to mess with too much, I'm going to take my time, which I do, but for the purpose of the video, I'm going a lot slower. And I'm still following my guide, you guys. Still following my guide. And if you guys notice, I'm still following the shape of an orange. Remember when I do haircuts? I say this every single time. When you are doing hair cutting, you want to follow the shape of an orange as if you were slicing an orange. Because the head is shaped that way. The head is not a flat piece of paper. And a lot of us get stuck cutting in one direction and then you start over cutting. So how I know my guide, if you notice as I'm moving up, the hair will start to drop. The moment I get to my guide, that's how I know where I'm cutting. I was disappointed to miss your live stream yesterday, but thank God I was able to rewatch. Straight or curls today? Curl. Mm -hmm. That's so fat, mm -hmm. girl. Oh, yeah. oh.
All right, chin down for me. So all we're gonna do is just make sure that our guide stayed the same. If there's any little areas that I need to clean up, like right there, they will start to reveal their self. Okay, so that's all we're gonna trim. All right, so still, like I said, can't spray any emollients on. We can use some Sebastian Schaefer. That is an aerosol. It does not have, um, well, let me make sure. Let's do that. Make sure that it doesn't have any um, nut oils in it. No. Only polymers. No nut oils. So we can use the Sebastian Shaper. This is going to help us to form the curls. Okay, so all I'm doing is spraying it on, and then I like to comb through to distribute, and then I use that as kind of like a holder, a sealer, whichever word you want to use when I'm doing my curls. So I'm going to start up here in the crown. I'm going to use the one inch ceramic um, black diamond iron that you guys see on my website. See how soft it keeps the hair? Hey, Grasshopper. Yep, it's 221 people watching. I need everybody to close your chat and go and thumbs up this live. We should have at least 200 thumbs up on here. So make it a habit, you guys. When you come in, go ahead and just thumbs up before you even start chatting. That tells YouTube how good my channel is to rank me among all of the other big, big dogs on here with all their millions and billions of followers. I will soon be there. My goal is to hit 400,000 by the 1st of October. And I think that's very easy to do because I'm only like 6,000 people away. So, so, you do this like that for me. so when I start seeing that the hair is doing what I don't want it to do. I'm going to paint. Okay, so when you see me do this, that means that I need the hair to do something. So I'm gonna pin it and allow it to cool. And because I don't want the nape to be too exposed, I'm not gonna pin the nape. I'm just gonna give it a nice curl like that. Where am I located? Um, just, you can say Orlando, Florida. It's the easiest. If you were flying in for an appointment, you fly into Orlando. All right, chin this way for me. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and just kind of do this little area here.
All right, so for the area right here in the side slash crown slash top, you don't want to make it too tight, but tight enough that it will feather really pretty. You know, a part of me says the goddess polish does not have any nuts in it, but I want to look for myself. Actually, no. Goddess polish does not have any nuts. It's silicone based. So it's all the cones you can think of. But her hair is so fine in texture, you guys. You also have to be careful with even spraying those kinds of sprays because then it weighs her hair down. All right, so we're going to take our rake. So you can use this one or this one, whichever you prefer. Because I wanna keep as much curl, I'm gonna use the rake. This one can sometimes remove a lot of the curl. All right, chin down for me. You guys see the difference a cut makes? Look at how that hair just lays. So all of those hairs in the middle here that were just breaking or have broken, they just blend right in. That's really what you want. You just want them to just blend in. So if you did your cut the right way, then everything would just kind of fall like you just gave her a ton of layers. So for the front, when you see that it's just being a little too stringy for your liking, you can take a small amount of goddess polish. As I said, this has no nuts in it. You're going to come farther back. So you see me back here? That's it. If I'm too close, it's going to be too heavy. So all it's going to do is kind of help to pull the hair together so that she doesn't have a lot of those flyaways or those stringies. Okay? And then for her front, same thing. down from the middle and you see how we got that height here that's exactly what we want to give her a lot of density or volume in the area where typically that's the flattest part of our head i said beautiful your hair is beautiful it looks good <laughs> maybe in their old zone <laughs> Okay, so her question tonight. is, how does she take care of it tonight? So I'm going to show you guys really quickly an easy way to maintain um, keeping as much body as you can. So you'll take a couple of pins. You can get these at any store, okay? Or even okay. Um, bobby pins. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay? So we're going to take some pins or we can use bobby pins, okay? So when we do this, she's going to take her hair and she's going to put it in large sections. So this side over here, she'll take this side, pull it up, right? So you want to bring it up, and she's going to follow the curl. So here, I'm going to give you this mirror. Okay? 
So she's gonna take this side, one whole side, comb it up so that it's nice and smooth, make it into a pin curl, and then pin it to her head, just like that. I like these pins, but if you can't sleep with them, you can definitely use bobby pins. That's called a pin curl, okay? That keeps the curls, that makes life so much easier for her. This area right here where it's the flattest part of our head, she's going to make one more curl here all by itself. Okay, so I'm going to take all of this hair right here. Do the same thing. You saw me go up with it because I want to keep the volume. Okay, keep the volume. And pin it. So if you're using bobby pins, these are typically the best ones. You're going to turn it down not up, so the tooth should not be sticking up, it should be down, okay, just like that, open it, stick it across, same thing down here, she can take this as one large section, or if you can't, you can make it two, you're following the direction of the curl that's already there, same thing, take your pin, I'm using even the small one, Keep your curl nice and curled and pin it. And then over here, she'll do one up here and one right here. So, so far we did one, two, three, four, five. That is the easiest way to keep your curls. So then in the morning, you take it out, take your pins out, just like that. The hair is gonna sit right where you pinned it. Take your wide tooth comb, If you notice, I go like that. So I go across the head and then pull it back with my hand. Or you can just finger do it. Okay? So that is the easiest way to keep your shape. I do that for my long hair clients, um, my bob clients. It works well for anyone who has any length of hair outside of a shortcut. So we'll spray her with a little bit of Sebastian Shaper because she actually has to drive about over an hour to get back to home. So this is gonna keep the hair in place. It doesn't make the hair hard. You guys can use Sebastian Shaper at home. This is a great styling aid for you to use a couple of days a week or maybe once or twice a week. And that's really it. Wow. So you can go back and watch your own video and see how it's done. All right, you guys, so we are all done with her. I'm actually going to be filming another video that I'll post later today. So I'm not going to stay on live at this point, but I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.